quick, let's see who we have on. Hi Marilyn, hi Belinda, hi Devon. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's very cold here, so I might have to put my heating on in the shed. It's really nippy today. Hi Wendy. What's the weather been like by you then? Shocking today. Hi Philippa. So we've had issues today. Usually out here I've got a, I've got a desktop computer and I've been away for the weekend so everything was switched off. And when I came back, switched it on, it would come back on again. <laughs> Isn't that the look? So <laughs> I've got... Um, I've got me my old iPad, so I hope it doesn't peg it on me because it's very old and it takes all day to charge. But I can see, I can see what I'm doing on it. Um, I'll have to check on my phone, I think, for comments. But yeah, anyway. So as you can see, here is the card that we're going to make today. Um, I put a picture up of it the other day. Um, it's quite a big card pretty card I think you could use it for any occasion doesn't have to be birthday um, and it's using some of Julie's stamps but this time when I make it I'm going to use Hazel's paper pad so I'll just pop that out of the way stand it up there so I can see where I'm going okay so it's an 8 by 8 card like I've mentioned but this time instead of using a scalloped card I'm going to use just a straight edged one I did fill up her I had a fabulous birthday. I was very spoiled. I really was. Um, yeah, it went away and partied with the family in Liverpool. So it was real good fun. Hi, Brian. Hi, Gloria. Thank you for joining me. So as I said, I'm going to use um, Hazel's paper pad this time from um, her latest studio light, her only studio light release, uh, Nature's Dream. So I'm, go I'm going to choose this one in the corner here. Um, it's like a, a little fern pattern, but it's 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 a pattern that goes any which way, so you don't have to worry too much about which way it's going up and which way it's not. So here it is, and all I've done is cut this with a small border around it, so you can see the white just around the outside of the card. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue that on and let that dry while we crack on. Hi Sandy! So we shall do that first, get this on. So I'm using uh, wet glue, studio light glue. Um, I, use, I usually use pin flare, but I've found since using the studio light one, there isn't any difference. And uh, studio light's a little bit more cost effective. So that's the way I'm going with it. So right, that's on. And then we have panels that come across the front okay so there's three layers to these panels and the panels you need three of them and they're just white card okay and they measure seven and a quarter by two and a quarter hi judith hi julie hi dawn hi sue thanks for joining me so they measure seven and a quarter by two and a quarter okay and they are going to sit on the card like so okay and then we need the paper again that we've used in the background and we need three panels to go on top of these panels so I've used seven inches by two inch panels for this and they're going to go onto there okay so that we can do as well we can glue those on it's quite a quick card this there's a bit of stamping uh, and a little bit of flower composition and all that kind of thing so it's not going to go too fast but it's uh, it's not a very difficult card to do but pretty nonetheless so I'm just going to pop these on equal border all the way around try and get them an equal border anyway best if you lift it up and move it about so I've found so there we go one Isn't it funny the way you have to turn things on the side to be able to work? <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? 
Right, so, number three. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Danny. Danny's my daughter. You must be bored, love, if you're watching me. <laughs> there we go. So there's three panels. And on the back of each panel, before we glue them on here, um, you can use foam pads, but it seems like we're all using excess cardboard at the moment from those packages we get. So I'm going to glue these on as well to give them some time to dry. They're just panels of card from one of those well-known river boxes. I mean, we get plenty of them, may as well use them. So one on the back of each one. And it, get, it gives the card some real good stability. Because sometimes if you use the foam pads and you you know they're individual foam pads, then you get little breaks in it. And uh, if you put it through the post, sometimes it bends on them breaks and it doesn't look as good. So at least with the cardboard, um, it lies flat the whole time. And uh, I won't get shouted at by Brian. <laughs> there we go. So there's three of those done. So. You can do this by eye to put them on, but if you really, really want to be, um, hi Annie, if you really want to be fussy about it, you can measure it so it's roughly eight. So you want to get the four inch mark sort of in the middle of the panel, okay? Or you can just do it by eye, you know, it's, it's fine. Doing it by eye is absolutely fine. Just gauge your top and bottom. And because you've got using wet glue, you can sort of wiggle it around a bit. There we go. That looks fairly straight to me. So that'll be fine. And then all this can be drying while we get on with the stamping and the flowers. And then all you've got to do is sort of pop this one on next to it, equally spaced if you can. And then that one's going to go on, on there. There we are. So now you can see if you were in the middle. But you know what? It really doesn't matter if you're not. I'm not sure anybody won't, you send it to won't ring it up and say, oh, by the way, you didn't get that middle one banging. And if you do, you don't get another card. <laughs> How's that? Okay, so just make sure this line is straight here. And then you can pop that one on as well. There we are. Three panels on. And just pop them to one side to dry okay so now we need three panels to go on top of those panels but these what these ones are going to get stamped on okay but at the same time we are going we, we have a panel that goes across the middle here all right and that also that top one needs stamping on so let's get these two glued together and this one can be as thick or as thin as you like but I've got seven and three quarters by two inches for that one and just under to make a panel a pretty card to go across so the whole thing is coordinated you've got the same paper right the way through and it will match beautifully so I'm going to glue that on there and just leave that to dry with the rest of them while we do the stamping there we are so there's all the panels there and these three and the one that's going across the last one we've just made all need to be stamped on. So I'm not going to get my stamp platform out, but I have got the foam out of it. And I'm just going to stamp these panels up. Kind of all in one go, I think, maybe. And this one, of course, has to go that way. So we shall do that one in a moment. So the flower stamps I'm using are... Hey, Joe. Hi Pam, hi Joanne, hi Gail, we've got quite a few on now. So the, the flower stamps I'm using are these ones of Julie's and they're fle uh, fresh florals and I will be using the dyes that match as well. So I'm going to be using the big one for the flowers um, and the two smaller ones, that one and that one, to stamp on the panels. Okay. Now, I don't mind if the um, if the stamps don't come out absolutely bang on. I, do, I don't mind that, so I'm not going to use my stamp platform for it. 
I'm going to use this little thing. So first off, I'm going to use the bigger of the two stamps. I'm going to put that there so I don't lose it. And for this, I am going to use the closest uh, Distress Ink colour I could find to match the papers. Um, and this one just happens to be Iced Spruce at the moment. You can use Oxides. Anything you can use, anything you've got, that will match whatever papers you're going for. So I'm just going to do the uh, stamping across all three and hope for the best. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work well. It doesn't matter because I don't mind that. This kind of looks vintage, but they do stamp beautifully. So I'm using the, the big one and I'm going to do some on, some off the panel. I'm using the, the stamp foam underneath out my platform just to give it a little something so it's not leaning flat against me. Um, me mass it's always best to have something spongy underneath so and I've got a piece of paper on it so that I don't mess the stamp platform foam up so that's that one done with the big ones it doesn't take too long I think it's quicker to do it this way when you're doing like lots of little stamping like this because oh you well you're just moving the stamp all the time and cleaning it and so it's easy to do it this way and Julie stamps and the range is always to be fair as long as you wink them up right stamp really really well okay so let's move them two over go in with the third one I'm not going to colour these I'm going to leave them as they are just with this outline colour that I'm stamping in I suppose you could emboss these as well if you wanted and watercolour them that would be quite nice um, or even colour the background in and uh, bleed them out using the bleach faux bleach method with the water hazel weather hazel's all weather paper would look fantastic yeah it would it would but when i prepped this we didn't have that those those papers so i was only thinking that this afternoon because there's such beautiful colors in them they would have looked amazing yeah i totally agree so maybe maybe people can have a go doing them and also, if you've got some papers that you weren't keen on in your stash from years ago, you know, you can make these, you can bring the papers a bit up to date with them, can't with the with this kind of card, can't you? You know, so now I'm going to go back in, but I'm going to go in with the smaller of the two stamps. So I'm going to make sure I've inked it first time off. So I'm just going to put some in the gaps that we left before. You can put whole ones in, half ones, totally up to you. As long as you just fill it up as you wish. Bring these back in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Brian's off now. He'll be out there already making one. <laughs> it's good though. It's, it's good. It's, you know, a lot of people sometimes people watch and think oh i haven't got the papers that she's got or i haven't got but you know they, they look amazing in all the papers once you find something that you really like a pattern and they will look so different in all the different papers as well so you know just have a go if you don't like it you can always turn it over and do something else can't you because i think those papers are double-sided aren't they so you can start again so there we are that's two And there's so many of Julie's floral stamps. You could use different stamps totally and get a completely different look, I think. So well, let's just do one more on the edge. There we are. I, I have a big issue trying to do random. As you can see, they kind of lined up all the way down. I was a bit better with the pink one, but random doesn't go well with me. So there's the three panels and the one for a cross. So let's bring it back in and pop it all together. Do this one first. There we go. And it goes on top of the papers, obviously. I think this the green is really quite pretty. Let's pop that over there. And then we can go straight down with these onto there. Again, 
turning it on its side. Tracy has to work sideways on quite weird. There we are. I do tend to do most of the cards I do were kind of pink and pretty and and I thought you know what I don't I hardly ever hardly ever make any green ones so let's go with the green this time see what happens there we are okay so we've got the three so the next thing I, I, I thought I'd do is add a little bit of ribbon just to soften it. Um, just across there. I mean, you can still see the design through, but I just I just wanted to put something on it to soften it. So I'm just going to attach it on the back with some um, double-sided tape. Catch it. I think... I think I put far too much glue on. Yeah, I, I know, you do. I think it depends on the glue you've got as well, though, to be honest, Yvonne. I mean, I've used some glues that, you know, have been really thin and they have come unstuck. But the 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 this one, this tacky glue and pin flare and the new EVA glues, not that I've tried any of those yet, um, but those glues kind of, they, they're quite, they seem to be really quite good and you don't really need a lot. And the other thing is, if you put too much on it, it squishes out the side, doesn't it? No. So, there we are. A little bit of ribbon. Now, you're not going to see a great deal of the ribbon. But you are, you do see a little bit on the edge. So, it's enough for me. That's enough, to, you know. Once I know the ribbon is there, then that's fine. And this is going to go across the bottom. So, if you do any mistakes on your panels, put, your pa put the mistake towards the bottom. And you can cover it with this, which is a handy tip. So I'm just going to have to put a little bit more of this double-sided on now because obviously I've covered it with the ribbon so bits of it isn't sticky. So that's what we need on there. I don't want to put uh, any more um, cardboard or foam tape on it because we've got some on there and I'm going to put a little bit on, on some of the embellishments that go on in a minute. So I don't want it too high, too high up. But again, up to you, you know. I always think adding dimension to something makes it look quite expensive. So, uh, I'll pull the whole stiffy off, yeah. As you can see, I've got no nails, so it's kind of... There we are. So, where you place this is up to you, but I'm going to place it fairly near the bottom, and it goes directly across the card. So, I am a little bit away from it, so please excuse me if I'm... Um, I don't want to get my head in the way, if it's not completely and utterly straight. Let's see. It looks too looks fairly straight. So there we are. So that's the the bulk of it done really, and now it's just down to the embellishment bits. So I have used Julie's Dinky Circles um and layers and frames for these these dies. Now I think when I put these away, I never ever put them back in the right place, so it's a combination of the two that I've used really so you'll have to forgive me for that they never ever go back on the right place I need to sort it so I've used this um this fancy one which you know I really love because I use it on every card more or less it's this one um so I've cut it out of white card and then this one here it just cuts a little thin thin kind of rim um i don't know frame if you if you will um and so i'll cut that out of the paper as well okay and i'm going to glue that on there all right just going to pop that on there and hopefully if i do it straight now i know when i did the pink one i didn't put it down straight but that was okay because i hid the the dodgy part underneath the flowers i shouldn't be telling you all my secrets should i but you know Sometimes it's difficult, isn't it, to get it down completely flat and straight. So let's hope the straight gods are with me today. And I get it on. Yeah, that's not too bad. So there we go. And then Brian will be happy. On the back, I've cut out, I've die cut a circle of card from the box. The same box as the, the panels came from from there. And I'm going to glue this on. 
but I think I might have to use a couple of foam pads on the back of this or a little bit of foam because it's got this one it, it was sitting on this one so I'm going to use some finished foam on here just one little bit just so it sits flat against that might need two because this is not very uh, deep foam but we'll see I'll just squish it down so that's going to sit about there now you're going to need some space don't forget to put your flowers on so around this side here and you don't want them hanging off the card so there we go that's on as you can see it's not difficult not a difficult card to do so walk that off to one side and now we'll bring in the embellishment bits i'll just have a quick look and see if there's any any uh i'm gonna behave myself now hazel fortune yeah i have haven't i no i do behave i do there we go so what i've done is as you can see I've cut a couple of birthday, happy birthdays out of um, Hazel's papers. And I've used the happy birthday profile die sets, the happy one and the birthday one. And I've got the back place on them as well. As you can see, they're really well used. I, I really like the font. I like the size. But I keep them together in the one packet and then I know they're always together. So I've cut two of each. And I'm going to just simply glue one happy on top of the other and the same with the birthdays it just gives this makes it stand a little bit more proud um excuse it if i wobble there we are not too bad push it on that's good that's pretty good spot on first time well done trace and then the same with the birthday So, I need to get some more of these um, sentiment dies. Because they're really good. They cut beautifully as well. No messing about with them. So there we are. There we go. And then they're going to go on their own plates. So then that will have a little drying time by the time we get the flowers done. There we are. This is the, the bit I always struggle with. But today, because it's double thickness, it's kind of behaving. And it went down well. And you could always cover the top one with... Um, she says it went down well as it moves. Um, you could always cover the top one with glossy accents or triple embosses to make it shiny. You know, you could do all of those things just to make it look a little bit different. But it does stand out quite well, I think, once it's on the back plate of white obviously and I've kind of kept this whole thing to just those colours so there's that done and then it gets to hi Annie hi Karen gets to the flower bit okay so for the flowers I used the um the same flowers from before that I stamped the background with I used that little tiny one and that one but then I also went in with the bigger one, which is here, to create this flower. And I used the dies as well, as you'll see in a moment. So if I put them up to one side, all I did was stamp them using the exact same um, iced spruce that I, I used on the background. And now I'm just going to pull the die cutting machine in pop it through and cut them out with the dies on top i've lined them up because i'm not too good at lining them up and uh, it could have taken a while you know by the time you turn around and move them about and uh, it's not it's not wonderful view in life so i thought right okay i'll, I'll stamp them because you all know how to stamp them and i'll cut them out in front of you for a change because i never do that so that and there they go they pop out well so these i'm going to keep oh i've even lined them up well i'm not right good at doing that either normally but i've done a good job there for a change these i'm going to keep whole i'm not going to do anything with. i'm not going to cut them up but then if you cut the mouse again so what you need is one two three four of those two of those and just two of those okay so i'm going to bring in 
another colour which is very very similar you could use the ice spruce this is just a little bit softer and it's a studio light little in cube and it's uh, grey blue and all I'm going to do which is not too technical is just put a little blob of glue, uh, glue. ink in the middle there. it just needs a little bit of something on it so it's not boring white okay and this is the one that's going on the bottom so you're not going to see too much of it really but you know it's there you know so I had already inked those up so I've only got a couple to ink up so there we go so the colors on now the ones I've just cut those three they're gonna they they can stay flat okay um, maybe I'll cut this one but the others I want to put a bit of dimension on them so and all you do to do that is just cut around the petal and down to the middle so that each petal becomes separate and you can give it a bit of shape really it's there we are and any bits like that that are a bit too pointed just go in with your scissors and round them off. It's not difficult. Just give them a little bit of a rounding. Because you've altered the shape of them with cutting them, then it does sometimes give them a jagged edge, which doesn't look great. There we are. And I've done the same with each of these. I've cut down into them so that you can shape them. Okay. So in order to shape them, keep those flat, them too flat. I just turn them over. Now I think I use 300 GSM card which sometimes ruffles the edges so you can wet them and then it won't do that but I don't mind a little ruffle on these so just go around with your ball tool around the outside and bring them up on the back okay and then once you've done all of them and they've curled upwards then you just turn it over and you get your ball tool in the middle and you press it down and it gives the dimension for the flower so all I'm going to do with them in turn as I do them is put a bit of glue on it you can use hot glue or you can just use the same glue you use for that you've used all the way through and just pop it on and then give it a press in the middle and that should hopefully stick while we're doing the rest I've missed one there with the um, inking there we go. Same with this. You don't have to do too much to these ones though. You can just cut them. It's not as big as the others. So again, cut them on the back side and turn them around. Offset the petals as well and then press them down. Once they're dry, you can give them some dimension. You can fluff them up a bit. But you know, these two, they're only single layers. Okay. But the, the others are bigger. When I do my flowers, I always do one large one, then a medium sized one either side of it, then I do the smaller ones either side of that. And uh, it just gives a nice flow, I find, to the flowers, you know. So offset them, press it down. There we go. And then once they're dry, we're going to fluff them up a bit. So, so there's the flowers done. Let's move them stumps before I get stuck to something and lose them. Okay. So the next thing, leaves. I like a few leaves. So the first thing I did was using the corresponding dies was just cut out of Hazel's paper a couple, four, four flowers, uh, four leaves, sorry. Use those dies for them. And then I cut four plain white ones, okay. And I was going to leave them plain, but then I decided, no, I'm going to use the stamps on them as well. And you get the stamps with them. Um, I may need to cut them on a piece of white, just so you can see what I'm doing, really. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because against the black, you can't really see. But if I put them on there, you can see. OK, so I'm going to use the ice spruce. And I've, I've cut, I've done one already, so I'll show you what I'm doing. I've just cut them in white, and now I'm going to use the stamps. So you find out, this is the way I do the leaves, because I'm not grand at um, lining up the, the dies. I'm really not. And I end up with missing half of what I've just stamped. So this is how I do it. I'll start with one. Put some of the ice spruce down on top of it. And and then I hold onto the edge of the stalk. Pop it down. 
and then just press on it and that way I get more of it see I haven't missed it that way I prefer to do it that way I mean obviously you'll find your own way if you're good at lining up then great just stamp them and die cut them out but I'm not so just pop it down and press it on it's all good there we go and then this one goes the other way so I'm going to use the uh, the other leaf stamp for that because as I said one goes one way one goes the other so put the stalk on drop the leaves on and then just give it a press there we are happy days <clears throat> there's my leaf stump so it's just now all we've got to do is put it back together again so Pull the card back in to move these out of the way. So, what we need to do now is decide, flower wise, what we're putting in the middle of them because they do need something in the middle. And I'm gonna use um, glossies and I'm gonna use the earth tone ones because this, this particular one here, this color, is perfect for Hazel's papers. So I'm going to find my Kofi tool and I'm going to put, I might just put a little dot in there because there's ink in them and I, maybe they won't stick so good. I don't know, but I'm not chancing it. So I'm just going to put a dot of ink, a eh, dot of glue in the middle of each of these and pop the glosses on before I glue them on. Right, there's that one there. So we're going to go... Big one there, perfect colour. Perfect, perfect colour. And then for the medium ones, obviously, I'm going to use the medium sized ones. And then the little tiny ones for the smaller flowers. Okay. They're so tiny, aren't they? These ones are that cute. I was thinking the other day, I use loads of these, and I was thinking, just Julie do a packet of just plain white ones and a packet of just plain black ones because they're the colours that I use the most to be fair and I might have to invest if she does <laughs> so they're on so starting with the large one okay now bear in mind you can put your happy and your birthday down you don't have to glue them just yet but put them down where you think you may be putting them Okay. I want to put birthday bang in the middle of the ribbon and I'm happy just above it. So now you've got some kind of place for putting your flowers down. So I'm going to, usually if I'm posting this, this goes with hot glue. This is put on with hot glue, but I haven't plugged it in. So there we go. Big one on first. Okay. And then... I start looking at the composition so I'm wanting probably one of those leaves up there facing that way one of those down here facing there and then the medium sized ones going to go in and I like to tuck them underneath the big ones you know don't leave any gaps kind of thing it looks a little bit prettier if you group things I think your eye likes things more if it's grouped so slide it underneath a little about there I would say and then you've got your smaller one which will capture this leaf and slide in underneath there so you've just got a little bit of leaf sticking out but it's, as it's not glued yet it's all good we can uh, we can move it about so that one's going to go there okay and then the same up the other side lift up this bottom one, slide it in a little. There we are. Then the small one. So you've got your flowers grouped. And like I said, when they're dry, you can lift them up. And then you can start putting in a little bit of glue underneath your leaf. Because now you know where it's going, which will glue that one down. And the same on here. Pop that on there. Okay, I've got lots of leaves and I do intend to use them. So you don't have to use all of them. You can just use some so you can pull it to pieces. 
and you can start tucking them in. I'm going to put that one up there, in and around there. That one does not appear to want to glue because I've had the heating on and it's just so warm in here tonight. But they are. I'm not I'd rather be warm than cold. So this one now just doesn't want to glue, does it? This leaf I'm going to pull off as well. I'm not using the whole leaf because that would be too big. I'm going to pop a bit of glue and stick it underneath there. Okay, and then these ones that you've just chopped off, you can just take out the centre stalk and you can still use them. They don't get wasted. You can pop them in and around. So we've got a hole there. So I'm going to pop one in there. And the same with this one. So no waste whatsoever. There we go. And I'll pop that one in there. So you can just about see it sticking out. And now we've got these. So up to you how much or how little you use. Um, let's see. Pop it in. Yeah, I'm just going to use parts of it. Okay. Like I did before. Just so that there's a different type of leaf poking out. Again, you can trim it down, no waste again, and then you can just lift up. And because you've got that lift on the circle, you can you can push them underneath the circle as well. So there we go. Tuck it in, and we got. I don't have to use all of them, just because I've cut them. <laughs> you don't have to go mad and use them all. I'll pop that one in there. But as you can see, it groups it nicely. And then you can start to bring those flower petals up as well. And then it's just a case of putting the happy birthday on now. So as you can see, it's going to sit across there. And across there now we need something underneath here because otherwise that's not going to glue down properly so I'm gonna use a little bit of foam tape just to so she puts it on the wrong side so work out where it's got to go so it's got to go from that P across to the Y we just need it so it'll attach and then we need flat glue on here so position the happy you can tuck it a little bit behind that flower leaf if you wish, flower petal rather. So the happy's on. And this one, we need a little bit of foam on the end of here, just so it catches and sits straight. Okay, so. Oh, I've got a bit of string stuck to that. The things you gather on your travels. There we go. So the birthday is now going to come down here. Line up about there so you can see the ribbon but it's not too in your face okay last thing now i know i love glossies um i know i love me hello <laughs> brian no <laughs> brian this is the last one i've got i promise <laughs> this is all i've got left <laughs> but i have got a whole bag of this stuff so it's it's gonna get used there we go so i love glossies but i'm not going to use all my glossies on the centers of all those flowers i'm gonna, I'm gonna be pretty mean about it so i am going to use some old gems and i'm gonna just gem up the centers of all of these just to give it a little bit more sparkle you don't have to do this um I suppose you could use glitter glue. I could have done this event ahead of time, really, couldn't I? Save you watching me. But some of them you don't need to put it on because you can't see it. It's tucked behind. So it might be quicker than we think. Um, yeah, you could use glitter glue, I guess. Right. I don't know where I got these from. I think they're Marianne Designs. I think they're left over from a prize. I mean, I don't tend to use many gems these days. Um, right. Not since I've discovered glossies. Right. 
yeah they're really old you can tell I'm having issues getting them off the uh, the backing paper so obviously you just put them on the ones that you can see but I think when it comes to do you know it's it's little details like this really that makes the card stand out a little more so I am going to be quite pedantic about it and any that I can see that are peeking out from behind the ribbon here I am literally because the ribbon isn't glued down I'm going to stick them on because that would be a little detail that I would notice because I'm a bit weird like that so there's one there one there and that's it really so but it carries it through so you've got the consistency one's there there I think that's it oh I glued the leaf on that one that's just a happy accident so there we go all finished using um Hazel's beautiful nature's dreams papers this time um I'll bring the other one in now this one's just annoying there we go so there's the pink one there's the green one there we go so I think equally as pretty in either colour and I will put the photograph of this one up tomorrow so actually I'll put the photo of the two of them up together so you can see them so there you go so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you have a go with it use Hazel's papers uh, use those wood papers that Philippa was talking about before uh, make your own papers use Julie's stamps and Hazel stamps and let's see how many different variations that you can come up with and if you do make it tag me so I can see it because I would love to see them so thanks very much for joining me and I shall see you soon have a good evening bye